Over the last few months, we've made great progress on our refit and we're getting very close to being able to leave the marina for extended periods of time. Recently, the weather has dramatically slowed down our progress. Live on a boat, they said. It'll be fun, they said. They were right. Today, our plan was to fully test our generator. We're going to need the generator to stay unplugged and keep our batteries topped off until we install the solar. However, in keeping with boat Screw repair tradition, it. nothing goes as planned and I may have made a $500 mistake. The objective for today is to get the generator up and running and we're gonna disconnect our power, the shore power. We're gonna let the batteries run down a little bit. I'm probably gonna use some space heaters to try to do a heavy draw and draw them down. And what we're trying to do is get the generator in use. And I want to see how quickly it's going to recharge our batteries. That's something that we need to know so that we can try to get a gauge on how much diesel we're going to use when we're out. Uh, we are going to have solar on this boat, but as of yet, we don't. Um, that's really all hinging on the arch. We haven't ordered the arch yet. We're going to need an arch pretty soon and then we'll get solar on and then we won't be reliant on the diesel um, generator so much. As soon as the generator started, I noticed water was coming out of the water pump housing, so I immediately shut it off and started to investigate the problem. What I thought would be a quick and easy project has turned into a rabbit hole that I'm about to dive into. This is the water pump. There's a, a bearing in here, and apparently that bearing has just given out and now water's leaking through there. I found an owner's manual on board for this engine and I know that this pump that I have here is not the original pump. The pump was discontinued so at some point somebody replaced a pump. We got a whole separate problem here. Notice anything missing? So this is the impeller. I have no idea when it was last changed and if I don't know when this was changed then that means I don't know when any of the maintenance on this thing we're done. It's clearly missing a wing here. There's a little screw hole right there and I suspect that that is designed to be a drain. If anyone out there knows and wants to correct me on that that's fine because um, I need to learn but I think that I should have opened that up to drain out any water to winterize this and I'm afraid that that is what has caused the failure, that maybe there was some water in there and this froze. Did the pump come? I think so. It looks like the pump. Kind of feels like a pump. I hope it's the pump. So maybe we can hurry and get this thing on okay. and see if it runs. This, this one goes over here, and I think it was like, no, no, see, it's about to do that wrong. <laughs> we might have to check the video. <laughs> so it might be 90 degrees back. This one here is like a little bit of an angle upwards like this. I think we're gonna get it this time. Yes. yes. Oh, so that's gotta go at an angle kind of like this. So I just need to get like a pick and clean this out and then we can reinstall them. Carter's gonna help me here and this might be a good teaching moment. So this is the impeller. This spins and it and it pulls water. This is the actual pump. This is that's the important part. Do you see the part that's missing? Mm -hmm. Yeah it's missing a wing. And we need to go get that in there somewhere. I know, okay. right? So we got to figure out where that went because it can clog up the whole system. So this pump sits right here where these bolts are sticking out. Yeah. All right, and then that there, this is where the fresh water comes in. Mm -hmm. And so that hose goes up to the pump. Okay. And then it goes through the pump and it goes out another hose and into here. The propeller sits up here, but we think that the piece of the propeller is there. Try this one. It's perfect. Okay, good. And you're going to want to move this counterclockwise. Flip that little lever. Perfect. Now, move it counterclockwise. We're 
diaphragm or something here. The inside of the heat exchanger had its own coral reef growing. If you have any way to prevent this from happening, please let us know in the comments below. What in the world is this stuff? I don't think they're teeth. <laughs> That's crazy. That's Ella good. did a yeah, great gotta... job learning how to install the new pump. There, you got it! Just as soon as I was coming to help, you got it. Washer. Mm -hmm. This is a split washer and this is a nut. Flat washer goes on first, then the split washer, then the nut. Let's see if it runs. The other day when I started it and found the leak, when I would start it, it would run. It sounded really good, but as soon as I let go of the switches, it would just shut itself off. And I don't know why that's happening. We have shut off the shore power and disconnected the back of the boat. We should be on battery power right now. All right, so I guess I'll preheat. be dry so that's good we should let that run for a little bit to get warmed up we're still on battery right now because we haven't flipped over on the, the AC board I'm nervous to flip it over to start charging so maybe we should unplug like computers and things that are like more important just in case it's like a high voltage that's coming through or something's wrong I don't know okay we've been on battery for a couple hours and we have cooked dinner and ran some space heaters had some computers on all that stuff we have drained our battery bank just about 15%, down to 84%, and now we're going to turn on the generator and flip over the whole system just to see how well this works. Um, as a precaution, we've unplugged computers and other sensitive devices just in case, just in case. saying we have 125 volts on each leg and our batteries have converted to charging. This is the first time we've actually ran our generator and tried to charge our batteries. When we hooked everything up, we had a general idea of how everything worked. We did not know if it worked 100%. So now it is all together. We've been unplugged for about two to three hours now, I think three hours. Big draw items, trying to draw the batteries down some. And they got down to 84% for the total bank. It's currently feeding in 86 amps back into our battery bank. I think that's pretty good. I'm pleased. So once we are all set up, we're gonna have basically three main ways other than shore power to charge our batteries. The first is going to be our large solar bank. We actually have our panels already. We also have our solar charge controllers, but we do not have the base system in place an arch or the bimini top ready to install those panels. That's why they're not done yet. That's why we do not have solar in place. The second way is our generator, which we just now have proven that it's gonna work great and we will be able to charge our bank, probably running it a couple hours each day. Not so bad. Our third way we have to charge our batteries is our Victron Orions. They're really cool technology. I think they're typically made for the RV industry, but we are using it on a boat, which is a little bit different. But it's automatic. As soon as our Yanmars kick on, Either one, they start charging the battery bank uh, while the engines are running. So we're not burning diesel for no reason, which is excellent. Want to see that installation video? We're going to attach that right over here and you can click on over and check that out. 